uh, the land of Israel over the people. Remember, we talked about this constant cycle they would go through where they were in obedience unto God. But as soon as the judge died, they would turn their hearts from God, worshiping false gods. So the Lord would allow their enemies to rule over them. And then their enemies would rule over them. And then they would cry out to the Lord again and say, God, please rescue us. Help us. We need your help. God would raise up a judge who would free the people from their bondage. The judge would rule over the land for a certain amount of time. When the judge died, then when the cycle would start all over again. So that's what we've been talking about. So this week we talked about three different judges. No, four different judges that judged over the land. Okay. So remember, Othniel was the first judge who judged the land of Israel, right? But he judged for his time, 40 years. But when he died, what did Israel go back and do? As soon as he died, what did they do? They turned their backs from God and began to worship the false gods again. They turned away from the Lord and they started to serve the false gods. So because they were worshiping the false gods, the Lord raised up King Eglon and of the uh, Moabites, the Mesopotamia, and he allowed him to oppress the people. How many years did he have them in bondage? This king it was a kind of long time. Remember, this is the one that made the dagger. So remember how long the dagger was? How many years did he have them in bondage? Eight years. Hey, close, Camille. 18 years. Yes, 18 years. He had them in bondage for 18 years. They were under his bondage. He made them pay heavy taxes. That's what he was doing. But that led them to, you know, become, you know, in poverty because of them paying all of his their money to him, right? So they cry out to the Lord, right? And so God hears their cry. God, and you know, of course, always. And I told you that was the, the great thing about the Lord that even though they turned their backs on God, God would still show up for them. He would still come through when they needed him. That's just how good God is. He didn't have to do that, but he did. And so they cried out to the Lord. They asked God to please deliver them from this bondage. So God raises up a judge. Does anyone remember who comes in at this time? Who's the judge that the Lord raised up? This is after Athia is the second judge. Samson? Uh, we didn't talk about Samson yet. No, he was a judge, but we just didn't talk about him yet. Ahud. Ahud, yes. So the Lord raised Ahud up. What was unique about him? I told you there was something different about him that wasn't common. Dennis? Yes, he was left-handed. So remember, he, he that was kind of something unique about him. He was a left-handed judge. Okay, so what did he do? He collected all the people's tax money, and then what was his plan? Tell me, because someone tell me exactly what he did to free the people from their bondage from the King Eglon. What did he do? Let's see. Stop the king. Yes, okay. Can you give me the whole story? What did he make before he went to go see the king? He made a what? Ooh. A long sword. Yes, he made a, the dagger. Remember, his dagger was how long? 18 Ooh. inches because they were in bondage for 18 years. Yeah, and so he made the dagger, and then what did he do? Yep, he went to the king. So she said he went to the king and he told the king he had a secret message. So what did the king do? He, um, he put all the people out. He put everyone out, all his guards, everything. And the man stabbed the king. Yes, and then he ended up stabbing the king and he locked the door. So by the time the king's guards found out, he was gone and he had already done made it back to the land and told all the the uh, soldiers to get ready for battle and they fight and who ends up winning this battle the israelites and now they are free so he you know he executed the king and this freed israel how long did he judge over israel eight, eight years so he judged over israel for eight years the people had peace and rest in the land but of course we know he dies and we know they go back to the worshiping the false gods worshiping the idols 
And so this time they were put under, this time the Philistines, they began to have problems with the Philistines and <clears throat> they began to have problems with them. And so they were tired, you know, they just would go back and forth with the Philistines. So they cry out to the Lord again, as usual. And God raises up a new judge, Shamgar. What does Shamgar do to the Philistines? What did something that was very different that he did because the instrument that he used to fight was... Very different. What did he do, Kinley? No. Okay, Evan. He killed six hundred people along with the ox. Yes, he killed six hundred of the Philistines by himself with the ox gold well the spirit of the lord came upon him but you know what i mean he just didn't go to battle with others so him alone 600 of the philistines were slain he slayed 600 of them with an ox gold uh, something that's not even used for battle he ends up um <clears throat> slaying 600 of them with the ox gold and so when the philistines see this they immediately are like, we'll leave you guys alone. We won't do anything. So Shamgar judges over Israel uh, for some time. But we know, obviously, he does die because we see they go back into their bondage. And this time, the Canaanites, and this was really the, one of the worst, the Canaanites began to rule over them. Not only did they have King Jobin, who was a terrible, cruel king, but they also had um, Sisera, who was the general in the army, and he was also very harsh. They like they would him and his army would just shoot arrows and shoot down some of the Hebrews for no reason. And he also had nine hundred chariots, so it wouldn't have been easy to just go and fight against him. So the 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 Israelites were very afraid of the Canaanites and the Canaanite king and his army and the general of the army. So. There was a lady during this time, and she was a prophetess. Does anybody remember her name? Who was the prophetess during this time? What was her name? Hannah? Deborah. Deborah. So Deborah is a prophetess. Remember I told you a prophet speaks on behalf of God. So if God has a message, he will speak to his prophets, and his prophets will speak to the people. And so Deborah, she was the prophetess at this time. And a lot of people will go to her for advice, you know, for counsel. So the Lord ends up speaking to Deborah. And what does he tell her? Because the people are crying out now. They need help. They need deliverance. So God speaks to Deborah. What does the Lord tell Deborah? What that he was going to do? Maybe that'll help. Okay, uh, let's see, Camille. Yo, you're on mute. It's, it's still on mute. Okay. Okay, so what did the Lord ask Deborah to do? I mean, I'm sorry, what did the Lord tell Deborah about what he would do? That sure? No, that's okay. Okay, Brian, um, what did the Lord tell Deborah he would do? He told her that he needed to um, judge the people so the Israelites can get out of bondage. Not quite that. Oh, wow. No. Okay. Yeah, remember, he spoke to her and gave her something. He told her something. God said, um, he 
that they said to do they wanted to get off the the bondage so and then she said Oh, okay, Kenley. Yeah, I remember what the Lord told him to go fight. Okay, okay, yeah, but but what did he promise he would do? Okay, Larry. Keep them safe. Uh, I mean, not quite that. Not that he wouldn't keep them safe, but okay. So remember, the Lord spoke to Deborah and told her that he heard the Israelites cry and that he would deliver them, right? And he also gave her the battle plan of how to defeat the Canaanite army. I knew it. Okay, remember, she, he told her exactly what they should do. Mm hmm. Okay, so who did Deborah tell about the plan for battle? He was the general of the Israelite army. What was his name? Barak. Barak. So she goes and tells him what the Lord said. So the Lord basically told him to get 10,000 men together and they would march to a certain mountain. Then they would go down to the river and that's where they would have the battle. So whenever Sisera, the general of the Canaanite army, I'm sorry, I'm skipping over. So they go through this, but Barak was kind of, worried right he was a little afraid because everybody knew how powerful the canaanite army was so he tells deborah the only way he would go to battle is if what he would only go to battle if what carla if he comes with him if she went with him he says i'll only come with you to battle if you come with me so he wanted deborah to come with him to battle and so she does Okay, she does. So when Cicera hears that they're coming, he goes with his army and they have the battle. But if you remember doing the battle, the Lord fought for his people, right? He, uh, he allowed some of the Canaanite army to be drowned. He also used like different elements to destroy them. So when Cicera sees that his army is losing, what does he do? Just like the kings did. What does he do whenever he sees that his army is losing the battle? He runs. he runs away, right? He tries to hide. He comes to this tent and he's like, okay, I know they're not going to find me here at all, right? He ran away to hide. And there was a woman there named JL, right? So little did he know, he thought he was escaping, but he did not know what? That JL knew that she knew exactly who he was. So she knew who he was and she knew about his army and everything. So she, you know, welcomes him in. She pretends that she's like, oh, come in, come in and I'll give you milk and all this. And he falls asleep because he really thought he was safe. But what does she do to him while he is asleep? What does she do to him while he's asleep? She stabs him. Yes, she slays him, right? He dies. Um, you know, because he thought he was safe, but he was not. And so, yes, she slays him. And whenever they come, they do, because they did go look for him. And when Barack comes, she shows him what she did. And remember, Deborah had told him that the victory of his battle will go to a woman. And we see that here. So Deborah becomes judge over Israel. How many years did she judge the land? The same amount of years Othniel judged the land. How many years did she judge the land of Israel? 40 years she judged the land she was judge over the land so she's judging the land and i told you every time there's a judge there's peace but of course we know deborah eventually dies she dies and <coughs> sorry she dies so the lord and they turn their their backs away from the lord and then they start to worship the canaanite god they start to worship the canaanites they were making sacrifice they built altars to this Canaanite God, worshiping this God completely, turning their backs from the Lord, the one true living God and worshiping this false God. They even start to do some of the things that the Canaanites were doing. Remember I told you the Lord forbid his people from doing certain things because he wanted to show the difference between his people and everyone else. And they started to do the things that, that God told them not to do. So when God looks down or when people look around, they're like, I don't even know who's God's people and who's not because they're all doing the same wicked things, right? 
So because of that, the Lord raised up the Midianites. The Midianites began to oppress the people. They were stealing their crops. They were destroying their crops. They were treating the people really bad and eventually led the people in the land of Israel to poverty because of what the Midianites had done to them. So there was a man we are introduced to and he's threshing wheat in secret, basically he's threshing wheat because he didn't want them to steal, to steal his stuff. So who appears to this man? Who comes and speaks to him? Who comes and speaks to the man, Harlem? The angel. The angel of the Lord speaks to him. And what is this man's name? Does anyone remember his name? I know it, I know it. Dennis, you have your hand up? Yeah, okay, what's his name? And I went mute. Goshen. Not, not Goshen. It does start with the G, but not Goshen. Anybody else? G. Nobody else? We get the same price in the hand. Okay. Gideon. Gideon with a G. Gideon. Yes. Yeah, so Gideon is the one who the angel of the Lord spoke to. And so the angel of the Lord speaks to Gideon. And he, he tells Gideon, what does he tell Gideon he wants Gideon to do? Now, little Gideon who's threshing wheat, not really, you know, looking for anything, right? Everybody knows what the Midianites are doing. Everybody's upset about it. Everybody's tired of it. But they knew there was nothing they could do. But so they cry out to God and God appears to Gideon. So what does God tell Gideon he wants him to do? Aviah? He wants him to stop. Stop what? Or stop who? Stop the king. Okay. Yeah, so the Lord tells Gideon that he, he has selected Gideon to be the one to deliver the people from the Midianites, from the bondage, from the, uh, the Midianites. Yeah. Same, I got it wrong. Thing. No, it's like the same. It's like the same. So the Lord tells him that he wants him to be the one to deliver Israel. He wants him to be the one. And so Gideon, he's like, oh. I don't know about that, right? Gideon's like, okay, first of all, I am from the least tribe of all the tribes. I'm from the poorest family of all the tribes. Not only that, but also I am the least person in my family. And you're sitting here and you're calling me to be the one to go deliver the people? So Gideon's like, I don't know about that. That doesn't sound too exciting. He's like, uh, I don't, I don't know if that's the task for me, right? And so the Lord is telling him, I'll be with you, Gideon. You're going to be able to do this, Gideon. I will be with you. But he still doesn't believe it. So what does he ask the angel of the Lord to do in order to prove that he really is what he really is the one that the Lord has selected to do this task? What does he ask the Lord to do? Okay, Camille. He asked him to do a miracle. Yes, he says, do a miracle. He says, show me a miracle and then I'll believe that you have called me and that you have sent me to do this. And so the Lord, uh, the food that Gideon had prepared, the Lord told him to put it on the altar, right? The rock. And what does the Lord do to the food? As soon as Gideon places it down, the bread, the food, and he pours the broth on it, what does the Lord do? He consumes it with the fire. And also what happens to the Lord in that moment as well? He what? He, he vanishes. He disappears. And so Gideon realizes that, yes, this was a miracle, right? This is, you know, miraculous what happened. And yes, the Lord has called me to be the one to free Israel from their captivity. Okay. So what was the first thing? So then the Lord appears to Gideon again and tells Gideon his first task would be to do something to something that his father made. What does Gideon have to do? The very first thing the Lord wants him to do before he goes out to free the people from the Midianites, the Lord told him to start at home first. What does he do? He tells him to like, like destroy a picture of a false god. Yes, he tells him to destroy that altar his father had built to the false god. So Gideon knows that his father will not be happy about it, him doing that, but he also knows he has to obey the Lord. So Gideon does it. He does it at night. So when everyone wakes up the next morning and they see what happened, they're like, what? Who did this? And they're like, Gideon, the son of Joash, he did this. Gideon was the one that did it. And so at first they were like, let's go get him. 
But then Gideon father speaks up and says, listen, why do you have to go and fight for Baal? If Baal is really a God, he's going to fight for himself, right? Yeah, if he really is, because we know the Lord does that. If anybody, you know, does anything to the Lord or his people, God will fight for his people and he will defend his name. But in this case, he's like, okay, so if that's the case, then Baal will do the same thing. And so the people think about it and they're like, you know what, that is true, right? But they also realize something else. What, what else do they realize? That their God, Baal, is really not a God, right? Because he would have did what he had to do to defend himself. Right. So this was the first thing the Lord instructed Gideon to do. And that's going to be more. But this was the first thing God wanted him to do was to defend his honor by, I mean, to remove the altar and um, let the people know who the real true living God is. That altar had to be gone because that was to a false God. It was not to the Lord. So the Lord knew exactly what needed to be done in that moment. OK. All right. So that's what our questions will be on on tomorrow. Everything that we've kind of discussed just now might have some extra on there. Okay. All right, guys. So that is it for our Bible lesson, our Bible review.